Patrick Ngoi is a man on a mission. He wants to reshape the future of energy use in Africa, one solar panel at a time. His Tanzanian-based company, Helvetic Solar, is driving renewable energy and job growth throughout East Africa. I'm the founder and CEO of Helvetic Solar, which aims at bridging the energy gap within East Africa by supplying, installing, and maintaining solar equipment in the region. Here at home, everything is run on solar. This is a typical solar home. You've got your TV that runs on solar. Uh, you've got your computer that's on solar. I um, mean, kitchen equipment that's on solar. This is your battery bank. So this is where everything happens, you know. This is, this you've got batteries in here that charge the system, your inverter there, your charge controller there. So this is my battery bank. So during the night hours, what happens is you, you, you charge your batteries during the day, it stores the energy, and at night, you actually use the inverter to change the DC energy to AC. So it's then transformed and then you have, like for this particular system, 24 hours, we do um, operating the fridge, microwave, uh, TV, radio, you mention it, I mean, it's done. And, and when we come all the way here, you've got a solar water heater. It preserves hot water for 72 hours, which is three days. So even if the sunlight isn't enough, it's a cloudy day, you still have hot water in the tank, 300 liters of that. Helvetic Solar was founded in 2007. Uh, it was a company that had only one member, me. I founded it by supplying and installing solar equipment in the small town of Arusha. We're the first solar company in Arusha uh, to start solar installations. And what I would do is close the shop, go and install the panel on the rooftop, come back and open the shop again. And then we're able to grow and scale up. And now we employ many number of people working for us. And we do the same thing. We've expanded our services from, from the small town of Arusha th throughout Tanzania. And now we've ventured out into other markets within East Africa region. Today, Patrick employs dozens of solar installation experts and more than a hundred resellers around East Africa. Ephraim Kamati is his right-hand man here in Tanzania. He works with large and small clients on the ground out of their head office in the mountain town of Arusha, which rests in a valley at the foot of Mount Meru, sister to Mount Kilimanjaro and Africa's 10th highest peak. The two of them have driven his company forward, signing deals to provide clean and dependable energy across the region. We have a very good team. Uh, we started with very few, uh, like six employees, three technicians, but now we are looking at 26 employee technicians. This shows that really we have grown and uh, we are well distributed through Tanzania, through East Africa, and we really want to move ahead through Africa. Helvetic covers the top and bottom of the market for solar in the subregion. Tanzanians like David Makondo prefer solar systems because they are far more reliable than the national grid. Our colleagues at, at my workplace, they have asked, well, whom do you advise to, to provide solar? And I've told them, solar Helvetic. When I saw the lights come on for the first time, I was overwhelmed. It was simply my dreams come true. And I can move in this weekend without the grid, and I have the solar. I can move in. <laughs> Today is the first day that the lights go on in David Makondo's house. All electrical solar systems work roughly the same way. A panel on the roof charges a battery in his house for when the sun goes down. Then an inverter changes the electricity so it will work with everyday appliances from charging a cell phone to running a refrigerator for life-saving vaccines in rural hospitals. Uh, right now, if you look at the Tanzanian market, you have about only the coverage of, of, of the grid coverage is at 22%. So you've got the remaining 78% without access to energy. And this 78% is both in urban, peri-urban, and rural areas. What Helvetic does is to bridge that energy gap by supplying the urban and rural clients with the much needed energy in different levels. We are talking from the range of households all the way through to organizations, institutions, and, and hospitals, clinics. So we cater for that type of market. Putting a smile on one's face is just amazing. And that's when this goes to show the potential of solar in the region. Helvetic supplies electricity to all sorts of non-governmental organizations that need reliable energy solutions here, from the United Nations to smaller groups like the Nature Conservancy. 
The problem related to power in Tanzania is mainly power rationing. The entire grid is uh, depending on water. So the moment we have lower water availability in the existing dams, it is a big problem if you are running a business. An international organization like ourselves, for example, is a challenge because of meeting the expectations. Communication um, are mainly internet depending. So once you are out of power, it means you are out of connectivity. Climate change means more erratic rainfall. For a country reliant on hydroelectric power as their main source of energy, that means that grid power becomes erratic as well. Solar power here is the go-to solution for dependable energy in the region. For many clients, the long-term saving in cost and productivity is well worth the sizable upfront investment. I would say to whoever who is thinking about having solar panels, they should go for it. I mean, it's one thing that you'll never ever regret to have. It's, it's a lot of money upfront, and I'm sure a lot of people are um, worried to invest such an amount. It's worth the investment, actually. We've never gone back to Helvetic, for example, to a point even themselves would reach out to us and say, are you guys sure there's no problem at all? We're like, you know, we're fine, so. <laughs> Helvetic CEO Patrick Ngoi helps put the potential of solar in Africa into perspective. Let's look at Africa as a whole. You have got a population of 600 million people who are not connected to electricity. And out of those 200 million people are in urban areas, 400 million people are in rural areas. Now, what happens is for them to get any form of energy, like lighting, they have to use kerosene. Like for them to be able to get hot water, they have to chop wood, biomass. And this is disastrous to the environment because you've got trees that are cut down, you've got the fumes that come from the kerosene that is burnt. So what solar does, it, it really bridges that gap between those ones who have um, access to electricity and those ones who don't by offering a clean form of energy that's capable of being installed anywhere like cell phones took over the market and leapfrogged over the installation of landlines in Africa. And Goey believes solar is on the verge of making the same sort of astounding jump, in turn making the centralized electric grid power of the past obsolete. I mean, look at the communications and the leapfrog uh, that we've had in terms of um, mobile cell phones in, in, in Africa, in East Africa as a whole. It's been amazing, and, and what I foresee is solar as well is going to have that leapfrog. Why? Because solar is going to take over, because solar is going to be able to make those ones in rural areas have energy in their locations. Through Helvetic's not-for-profit arm, the Light for Life Foundation, more than a thousand small-scale solar systems like these have been distributed to rural farmers across the country. Rose Salimu and her husband Daudi have been using theirs for two years. Today, Ephraim is visiting them on their rural homestead to check on the system. Because of this homegrown Tanzanian company, rural schools like this one now have hot water and electricity for the very first time, providing sanitation and safety for hundreds of young learners. What happened was before you had, in order for them to get hot water, they had to burn charcoal, firewood in order to be able to get just a bit of hot water. Now they've installed solar systems, you know, solar water heaters. Today they get hot water whenever it's needed, be it in the kitchens, be it in the bathrooms, and it's already installed. At Patrick's off-grid house in the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, he and Ephraim look at new solar products that they can bring to their clients. The famous snows of Kilimanjaro are almost completely gone because of global warming, and Patrick feels solar offers the world a solution to this problem. If anybody is skeptical and feels that uh, the crisis, the climate crisis, cannot be overcome. Well, I think they are wrong. Why? Because look at places that were off-grid. We're cutting down trees. 
uh, in order for them to be able to get any form of energy. Today, I sit in one of those places and we are no longer cutting down trees, we are powering our homes using solar. So that skepticism has to go away. Now we have to look about how we can adapt the solution at a grander scale. Patrick has big plans and is looking for big investors to help bring clean energy to millions of people across the continent. What I'm hopeful about is the fact that we've been able to capture the light.